Hello everybody, my name is Zampier Beep, and welcome back. Today, we will finally have a chance to look at the latest news. I was hoping to get this done last week, but the 35 minutes that the Sentinel-2 update took made it basically impossible for me to get that out in time. In addition to this, we have some new information that just released a couple days ago. But first, feel free to join our Discord server. We have a ton of really awesome conversations, a bunch of really informational topics being presented down there. We talk about new developments in housing and transit projects across the country and even worldwide. So if that sounds like it would interest you, feel free to join. The link is down in the description below. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's get on to today's Sentinel-2 update. All right, on the left is June 9th, 2024, and on the right is June 19th, 2024. We are going to switch to June 24th imagery once we get far enough north that we are out of the cloud cover. So here at Canal 9-22, we can see that some minor work is being done with dirt movement. It's very difficult to tell at this resolution as this is a fairly small project. This is the final utility relocation left before CP4 is pretty much done. Hopefully this can be completed fairly quickly. We have to keep watching this though. Moving further north here, Schofield Avenue, which is this roadway right here, and its relocation right here along the east side of the high-speed rail alignment. With that, we can see some embankment work taking place on the north end of this. Notice how the dirt embankment is a little bit wider here, which signifies further progression, in addition to some gravel or some kind of layer being installed here. It's very difficult to tell, though, with this low-resolution imagery. Here at Avenue 56, we can see some dirt movement taking place underneath the future bridge structures area. I'm hoping that there is some formwork being put up here for the central pillar for this bridge structure. We'll have to keep watching this and see if the authority posts anything. And here at the Deer Creek Viaduct, you can see this orange coloration right here, which appeared to be formwork and has now disappeared, which indicates that the formwork has been removed and the concrete has set. This is a good sign because we are moving further and further north with this formwork and soon, all of the piers should be complete and be ready for girder installation. Here at the Lakeland Bridge, just south of Angiola, we can see that some minor work has been done here. And now that we are finally out of the cloud cover, we can move on to June 24th imagery. Here, it seems like the canal might potentially be drained here. Notice the blue coloration of the canal down here where the water is in it and even on the north side, but in this section where the bridge will be constructed, I do not see any water. And now that I look at it more closely, you can even see a short dirt berm built here in preparation for water to be drained here. So yes, it does appear that this canal has been drained partially. That's a very good sign. Moving further north to Avenue 120, here on the left you can see dirt has been moved but not much has been done in terms of the grade separation. Good news, you can see the embankment being built up here. We are finally making progress on this grade separation. For a while they were focusing entirely on relocating this canal but now that that's out of the way, we can actually get to building the structure itself. You can also see some work on the embankment on the north side of this. No changes are visible at the Thule River Viaduct. Further north at Avenue 156, there are no changes either. But big news at Whitley Avenue. As you can see here, it is very obvious that bridge formwork has gone up now. This is a really good sign. This orange coloration is the wood formwork that you normally see. Concrete will not be poured until they put the rebar in. So we might have maybe a month or two until this formwork is fully ready and concrete can be poured. No changes at the Sweet Canal realignment. They still have not filled in this last portion of the former canal right-of-way. I would assume that workers are currently elsewhere on the project finishing up other things, which we will get onto in a moment. Continuing on to the SR43 curved bridge, we can see that some concrete work is underway. Not entirely sure what this is for, as the authority has not posted any updates on this project. I hope to see some imagery on it soon maybe some street view, but until we have that, I can't say much about this project. It does appear that there is some kind of gravel being laid down here, possibly a sub-layer of the future embankment. We'll have to wait and see on this one as well. Continued embankment work at the SR43 overcrossing. We can see that some minor work has been done on the embankment, but it is very difficult to notice. If we pay very close attention, you can see some dirt work being put in right about here. Some more land clearing is being done on this part of the grade separation as well. As you can see with the grass being removed, I believe that's just site maintenance work. Still no work on the canal relocation south of Idaho Avenue. Moving further north, 
we have some really good news. This is Hanford Armona Road right here. And a few days ago, the authority announced a road closure along Hanford Armona Road in Kings County, which will start June 24th and will end on August 31st, 2025. This is for the construction of a grade separation and it will probably look like the other grade separations further south on the project. We're now back at the Hanford Viaduct where you can see some concrete work has been taking place on the south end of the viaduct. They've had rebar installed on the southern half for quite a while now, so it's a good sign that they are pouring the bridge deck. We should start seeing this move north very soon. And here, closer to the San Joaquin Valley Railroad tracks, we can see on the north end some dirt movement being done. This is probably in preparation for the pilings and foundations of the rows of piers. Moving a little bit further north, we can see some work on the right-of-way here between Fargo Avenue and Grangeville Boulevard. Here at Fargo Avenue, we can see that they have cleared the roadway up the embankment again. We can see that they've regraded the embankment here for the roadway and have done some minor work on the high-speed rail right-of-way below the future bridge structure. As of right now, there is a single pier with bent caps just waiting for girder installation and bridge abutments to be built. And here at Flint Avenue, we have some incredible news. The authority announced on the 26th that the overcrossing has been completed and is now open to traffic. This is a really good sign because the structure has been sitting pretty much dormant for several years now. And it's a sign that maybe stuff like Avenue 88 might actually get completed in the next few years. We can see here that they have a cul-de-sac on the western side, but no cul-de-sac on the eastern side as a result of the canal relocation, which makes any cul-de-sac here make no sense. They have probably added a small access road on the south side of this canal to re-establish access to this farmland. Moving north to Excelsior Avenue, no progress has been seen here yet, though I expect that the change now that Fargo Avenue has been completed. The structure already has a bridge deck and some portions of embankments and of course abutments on either side but it is still waiting on power line relocations and the embankments to be fully built up, which is contingent on those power line relocations. I don't know what the schedule is for this structure, but I would imagine now that no progress yet on Deer Creek, Coal Slough, or Dutch John Cut. As you can see here, either side of this timeline, there is nothing done other than this concrete production facility for tub girders, which has had some movement, but that does not indicate construction progress. Here at the SR-43 Tide Arch Bridge, it's very difficult to tell, but there is still work being done here. I would imagine that formwork is being installed, but the camera on the satellite is being washed out by the brightness of these embankments, so it is pretty hard to tell. Some progress is being made on the Conejo Viaduct. As you can see here, on the left, there was formwork and rebar in place for the high-speed rail deck, and now you can see there is a concrete deck in place. This signifies that the current status of the Hanford Viaduct is about two years behind the Wasco Viaduct, so we should see this structure completed in the next year. Though if we are lucky, it could happen within nine months. Here at the Mountain View Avenue grade separation, we can see the future BNSF right-of-way post realignment is making some good progress as more gravel has been laid down. In addition to cleanup work being done around the grade separation, the structure should be open by the end of the summer, which is an awesome sign. Further north on the BNSF realignment, we can see that ballast has been laid down. This is an awesome sign, as it shows that very soon we could be seeing these tracks moved onto the new alignment. And subsequently, we can see the old tracks removed and high-speed rail right-of-way work being done there. As indicated in the last video, Nebraska Avenue, which is the grade separation immediately north of Mountain View Avenue, should start construction in the beginning of July. We can't really see much progress being made on the actual grade separation yet, or land clearing, but there is the focus on the realignment here for BNSF as discussed earlier, so we'll have to keep watch on this. I expect to see some progress in the next video. Here at Floral Avenue, another structure that should open around the same time as Mountain View Avenue, we can see that striping is probably underway here. I can see some coloration changes on the pavement here, and potentially crash barriers on the sides, though I'm pulling at straws for that one. We can see some right-of-way clearing work being done underneath, as well as some cleanup work being done on the north and south sides. Here at Mannings Avenue, we can see that on the left compared to the right, some more embankment work has been done. It seems like the embankment has started forming up a much more completed shape, as you can see a much sharper angle here. Right here at the end is where the abutment will be, so that shows that they have at least reached the final height of the embankments. I'm not sure what the grading situation looks like yet, so we'll have to keep watching. Moving further north, on the north side of Lincoln Avenue, 
we can see that some dirt clearing work is being done for the future possible heavy maintenance facility, though we are unsure yet if that's actually going to take place here. It is possible that this site is only going to host a light maintenance facility, and the heavy maintenance facility could possibly be in Merced, so we will have to wait and see on that one. Some final grading work is being done on the northeast side of the Ventura Avenue grade separation. As you can see on this top right corner, previously there was some differently colored dirt which implied that it was not fully graded yet, and now it is more smooth looking, which implies that this area is nearing its final phase of construction, and hopefully, and hopefully in the next month or so, the Union Pacific tracks will be relocated back onto their original alignment and the roads will be paved underneath. Some more work is being done on the east side of the Belmont Avenue grade separation. You can see that some land is being cleared again. You can also see some land being cleared on the former Motel Drive roadway where the future section of the Fresno Trench will be. I'm going to make a correction from the last video. There are only two rows of girders installed so far. The third row of girders would cross the Union Pacific tracks here, and there will be likely a fourth row of girders before it reaches back onto an embankment and continues down to meet the old roadway. There's some work being done on the east side of Olive Avenue. Right here, you can see some dirt movement being done. I'm unsure what this is for, as Olive Avenue is not supposed to start until after Belmont Avenue or McKinley Avenue is open to traffic. I'm thinking that it is a utility relocation in preparation for work in the future, which is a good sign because I really want them to have all of this work done before construction starts on a project because it will delay it significantly, like we have seen in the Grangeville Boulevard grade separation. Here at McKinley Avenue, we have confirmation that this grade separation will start fairly soon as there are scoping meetings underway, if I remember correctly, tonight. So we'll have to keep watch on this. And moving all the way north to Avenue 17, we can see that some work is being done on the east side embankment for the bridge structure. This might be subroad bed being laid. I suspect that's the case because I think this grade separation has the eastern embankment finished. This is a great sign as it means that once they finish putting the formwork in and pouring the bridge deck, they can go straight on to paving and striping as they finish up the bridge itself. And finally, road 26. We can see some big dirt movement taking place here, though the embankment itself is not being built up yet. Current work is isolated to power line relocations, as there are quite a few power lines sitting in this area. And with that done, that concludes our Sentinel-2 update. Now let's move on to the latest news. Alright, and now with the latest news, we don't have much to cover here. The first one is that the final section of the environmental clearance needed for SF to LA has moved forward, because they've released the final document. Now, in the next few months, I believe, they will approve it, and at that point, we will have full environmental approval from the San Francisco Transbay Transit Center to LA Union Station. LA to Anaheim is not done yet, and I don't think will be done until 2025 or 2026, but it's not a priority at the moment. Now, we can see the different alternatives here. So we have refined State Route 14, we have SR14A, we have E1, which is this one here, E1A, which is a slight adjustment to that, which is not visible here. E2 and E2A are this straight line version. Now, my preferred alternative is SR14A, um, and there's a big reason for that. With all the E1 and E2 alternatives, they are entirely in a tunnel for this entire distance, which means that you can't split the work up into two different sections. But with SR14A and refined SR14, you can split up the work as there are several different sections of tunnels even though it is a longer route. Now in the future, we can potentially go through these alternatives in greater detail. But as this is just a news section, we're not gonna do that today. The next piece of news is really big. The track and systems design contract has been approved. We are now going to have design work done for OCS and rails, which is huge. As everyone complains about having no rails laid, yet, it's the easiest section to do because when you've done all the, the grading work, you just you just put the tracks down, you know. But, oh well. Now, this is going to be headed by Sistra and Tipsa, and these two companies are, from what this would tell us, well-known in California. Anyway, with that out of the way... I've actually got one more thing to show you guys. As it turns out, a few months ago, I made a model of the Hanford Viaduct. I'll be showing this off in depth in a future video, but until then, 
you have this preview. Thank you all for watching. I do have a Patreon. I don't like advertising it because I already have advertisements running on the video. Feel free to drop by our Discord server. The link is down in the description below. Patreon is also down there. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye!